Do you want me to phone your person in the office? Do you want to carry it around? Okay. You couldn't stand the phone. I met you. All right. Are you ready? Oh, my goodness. Wait. I told you. It's very heavy. That has her car keys in it. Oh. It has my radio in it, her radio in it. Wow. I think you forgot to put the water in it. This I'm telling you, how do you do this? I'm around the I didn't hear. This is where we're going to get the you know, right here. My grandfather was about 99. And he was coming down the street. And my brother, you know, this one that Sumner Gage, Whittier, uh, and yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, that one was his grandfather. Was his son's grandfather. You know what? Yeah. And he, he took my grandfather's arm like this. The neighbors think I'm old and sick. So here I am, old and sick. No, 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 no. Pretty good to me. You know me, you were my landlord <laughs> for many years. Oh. Uh, you're dead. Yeah. Oh, that's it. He wants a little hay about it. There you go. Oh, there you go. Nice to see you. Right. You gotta turn around. You gotta turn around. Here we go. You remember? Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'll do it. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, gee, it's nice to be a few people. I know. We gotta get this. We gotta get this. We gotta get this. We We were here for the opening of this. That's right. That's correct. Sure. I got the mixtures. Okay, everybody's looking good. We're going to make a small adjustment. Come on, Come on. Come on. Could I have the nerve to say, my neat, my granddaughter, Sumner's. Bring your in, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you come up for me. Wait, um, oh, she, oh, she's yeah. referring to that. Okay. Yeah. Of course, she's come. Not a teacher, but Just please come. Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to. Come on. Please. I didn't even know they were on there until a minute ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Can I get in there? <laughs> <laughs> You're next. Move over a bit from me. Move over. Move over. Move over. Thank you. Got it right. Excellent. Let's sit there. Just face it a little bit. Excellent. Thank you. Everybody's happy? Does it show? And yeah, I'll stay there, please. May I convince you to, to join your grandmother? Or your, your hand? Go ahead. Take your hand. Can I be able to start? Yeah, can you face me a little bit? Excellent. Yes, sir. Sir, face me. Excellent, thank you.
Okay, once again, please, everybody's happy? Uh, Mike, come over here, come over here. Stay right behind me. Okay, looking here. Okay, one more, please. Okay, Mr. Forrest, you have anything else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now they say, and what is your, uh, where have you been? And, uh, <laughs> and I say, I did have an education. Excuse me, Jeannie. 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 Sorry, kids. Just smile. Just smile for now. Just smile. You don't tell your grandmother what to do. <laughs> don't tell your grandmother what to do. They need to get tighter together. It's okay. Well, the other one, I mean, three other people, the one This is my little kitchen of wells. We have a bag here uh, and there's some shirts in there. <laughs> you like a little backpack you have now? You have a backpack now. It says Whittier School. Whittier School. And there's some shirts in there. <laughs> Take her to the eighth grade lesson. 
Is it in City Hall? I pulled it off of Facebook because, you know, we don't go anywhere anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit? I want to sit. To see my granddaughter. But we were looking at you were saying how dapper they look, right? That voting was an event. He is all dressed up in his hat. They have fancy coats on. It looks like she's wearing a fur. And just how voting was an event. She had a mink, a full length coat. I was a little jealous of it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems her daughters bought it for her. Because I accused my brother of buying it for her. <laughs> so we were hoping, if you wouldn't mind, we were doing timelines of your brother's life. And we could get right until where he got to college and graduated from Boston University. But what we were hoping you could tell us was a story about growing up with him in Everett that we could put on our timelines. Well, I will tell you. You see, uh, almost everybody thinks that he wrote those plays and put them on at the church and was raised all that money for the churches and then he moved over to the, they wanted him to go over to the church in Melrose, and he put the, the, all of his class put that on. But everybody thought that was his first place. And he had written them, which he had written them. But I was his kid sister. And my grandmother was a dressmaker. And so she made all my clothes. I never got to wear any bought clothes like you people. Mine were all made by her, and I didn't think that was so great. But my brother said, Jean, that's my middle name, Jean, come downstairs. And go downstairs. And then I met grandmother's house. Was, was, uh, uh, let's see if I get nervous. The, the, the stairwell, what do you call it to the set? What do you call it? It goes down to the cellar. Uh, what Landing? I can't hear you. The piano stop? It's, it's the stairwell anyway. A few stairs down there. And he sat me down on one of the stairs. And then he sat me and his dog, Toby, down beside me. And now he opened the curtains and he had a play. And the play was so nice and it was going on and on and on. The afternoon, above kettle is the word I was trying to think. Above kettle is the stairs that go down the side. And so now, after the bulkhead, after the, the play was over and everything, my brother says to me, What did you think of the scenery? He had made all this beautiful scenery and everything, and uh, he had, you know, all the people that he wanted to do things in and everything. And that beautiful scenery that he had made was so hard and everything. And I didn't even notice that. I was too busy noticing everybody that was in it, you know. Now you know the first play he made. You see? Then he made another play. Down the side. Before he got to be playing 
big plays. And one of them was um, fish one, he called it. And I think he copied it from Harvard, because Harvard was, wrote, was talking all about the uh, fish. know your brother was into acting and was a thespian and did all of that. We didn't have that information on what we were given. Oh. So what a nice tidbit that you gave us. That's me too. <laughs> My grandfather got now has retired. And he got a little job on the side. The job we got on the side was being a um, janitor at the theater on on Chelsea Street, the Broadway. I think it was the Broadway Theater. Theater. And so, you don't think my grandfather would let my brother off easy. My brother had to come and work out in the theater, too. He had to hold up the chairs, sweep under the chairs. But there was a at that time, there was a um, man that was came there to entertain. They used to have entertainment at that theater. And so the man asked my brother if he would help me and help him because he needed a little side um, help. So, of course, my brother loved that. My brother got a chance to do the little things on the side, but, and that's how my brother got started in acting and things like that. But he had to do his sweeping just the same. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, kids. <laughs> we, we think that that's the exciting part of history. We love looking at the old stuff, but we want to know the nitty gritty. We want to know who people were. And when we read all of this stuff, this is great. We get a snapshot of his political career, but now you've given us a snapshot of his private life, who he was. He was hardworking. He wanted to entertain. He thought of you, his sister, when you were little and wanted you to participate. These are all ways that we're shaping up who he was as a character. He had four four paper routes at one time. And I said, why did you have four paper routes? Well, this is what he had. He had a Sunday paper route. He had a uh, was another paper loop and the reason he had that paper loop was because that boy was going to leave the sleeve ever to go off somewhere and get married or something. But then he asked my brother if he would take the loop. So my brother took the loop. So my brother had four, four loops. Uh, at one time. And of course they were small roots, but they, you know. <laughs> he owned his own typewriter. And I might, but let me put it in the I had his telephone, his Typewriter. 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 And I have it in. Uh, I have it in my living room behind the desk. I'm not sure uh, whether somebody else has tucked it away now. But, uh, 
if it's there, and if I can find it, would you like it? I bet these kids have not seen a, an older typewriter ever in person, maybe in photographs. I can't hear. But they are the computer generation, right? Yeah. They don't, they don't have the reference for that. They would love to see it. If you can find it. Well, it should be right there. We move things all the time, right? Treasures get tucked away and then, then they'll be found again. I would like it to go on, you know. Years ago, my, grand, my father took us um, up to Canada. And there was a place up there where this woman had written these books. And she, uh, now she either died or moved away or something. But the one thing, you could pay to go through her house. But the only thing in, so of course, you know, I had to pay to go through her house. The only thing in her whole house that was hers was an old fashioned, that, uh, what was it? Yeah. No, no, not the old one. Typewriter. Typewriter. Type the old-fashioned typewriter was all here. They were selling the, that old typewriter for, to make money for the uh, some group of weddings. So I always thought that my grandmother, my brother's typewriter was important. So I love you to have it. There might be family members that it would be much more sentimental to, though. Maybe you can send us a picture. Don't you think so? No. <laughs> Not treasures like that. That's a family treasure, right? I know. Some of the G. Whitty at school. I know. 40 years old. No, sir. School's now 40 years old, right? <gasps> Kissed me every time I go back. <laughs> My granddaughter was just told me, she said, Oh, why did you do that? I said, Why? She, she said, Because she says it's foolish to be sending a kiss to a school. So she threw me under the bus. <laughs> yeah. but is this the eighth grade? This is one of the eighth grades. I was in uh, eighth grade. I was on the school on uh, Summer Street. You know? It isn't a school anymore. You know the school on Summer Street? I do not know the school on Summer Street. No. Um, it's an apartment house now. Uh. <laughs> These kids are never naughty. <laughs> in, the sec in the second grade, they taught you to, first of all, I'm left-handed. And my mother, you know, my birthday is in February. And my mother was afraid that they would keep me back a whole year. So, and she wanted me to be able to go right along. So she sent me to nursery school. So I went through the first grade of the nursery school. And being left hand, oh, this is a good time for me to tell you. I was left hand, left handed. And every time I picked up the pencil, I picked it up left handed. 
and the teacher took it out of my hand and put a great big bow on my head. And all the other little kids look at me so funny. And I look at them so funny. I say, I know they're looking at me funny. A great big bow. You see, I'm 99 years old and I'm still remembering the bow. <laughs> anyway, I went in, in, I didn't go in the first grade. I went into the second grade. That's why I had this trim. And so in the second grade, they taught you. I'm ashamed of that. They taught you how to count. And so they used uh, gum. Uh, they were, uh, uh, let me see what I can say, samples of, of, of gum. And they had them on the table like this. And the teacher, I think, probably said, don't take the, don't take, take, touch the gun now. It's not really real. But the gun looked very tempting. And I, uh, the, the gun. And I got on with the gun. What do you think? The gum was made of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home and I opened it up, it was cardboard. It wasn't real gum at all. So see how I got fooled. The teacher said not to take it. It wasn't good. But I didn't believe the teacher, did I? No, I got home and the gum was Nancy Right in the second grade, I wasn't right. <laughs> but Miss Trim was lovely. She was lovely. And uh, and it was Miss Sparrow. Well, anyway, 
She taught us the grand match. Imagine in the second grade learning the grand match. I don't know if you could have people who have learned it. But the little boys had white gloves and the girls had ruffles. And the boys would come over and bow to us. And he would look it up and they would, and they would march down the center, center aisle and go around like that, you know. And uh, it was just beautiful. It was so lovely. And we boys were good. the silliest thing I ever heard of. Why would it? Who cares about one zero and one zero? But now when I'm old, I realize I must have had a reason to have one zero and another zero because they make the zeros for the thousands of dollars. Millions of dollars. One zero and one zero. So I really did. I thought I could. I would never gain any weight. I mean, any. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't very smart. I wasn't. like me telling you all these things, but when I got out of school at 3.30, I'd start to do the cat cartwheel. And I'd be doing the cartwheel after another cartwheel after another cartwheel all the way home. In your dress? <laughs> what? In your dress? <laughs> no. My grandmother was a dressmaker. Oh. And so my dress was a jumper. Mm -hmm. And then my grandmother, I, I hope you not, don't think I'm naughty for telling you this, but my grandmother made my, my underpants out of the same material as the dress. So you see, when I did these uh, cat wheels all the way home from school, my clothes were the same as my dress. Mm -hmm. And I could do it, but the other kids couldn't <laughs> because they didn't have the pants. <laughs> you don't call them pants. You call I call them, them bloomers. Bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> they had, That's what I would call them, bloomers. They're bloomers, but they didn't have the uh, bloomers like I did, see. You were so, a lucky duck. Now you told me, now I told you. <laughs> <laughs> see, not things that you think are so important, are so unimportant and everything, but to the, and you know, I really wasn't very smart. I used to play. 
a ring around the game. Ring around the rosy. Yeah, they, they, they had this game that they played. We, 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 we. I never could do that very well. But the other girls, oh, they knew how just how to do it. And I, I was so proud of them. The duck duck goose. <laughs> we would say today that we would show you and we would practice, practice, practice. Because how do we get smart? We have to work hard. Right? It just doesn't come. We have to work really hard to get smart. So I think that's the difference between back then and now is we think everyone can. Whereas education back then was a little bit different. Right? With your bow on when you couldn't do your handwriting. And now we would never ever do that. No. Excuse me, tell me again, see, I have a hat here. Oh, no, that's okay. I was saying, and now we tell our kids, and they hear me say this all the time, that we have to work really hard to get smart. So it doesn't come easy to get smart. You wouldn't go to the gym and lift a 100-pound weight off the bat. So that these kids, when they come to school, we exercise a little bit every day so that we get smart. Very good. But you know what? Exercise is important. It is. But it, I think the legacy of your brother with the hard work and the sense of community is embodied by the kids of this school. We have some of the nicest kids in the city of Everett. And part of that is because they come to the Sumner G. Whittier School. And when they go up to the high school and they say to see another Whittier kid, they have a smile on, they wave. It's a true sense of community down here. I mean, your brother would be so proud because that's what he wanted to embody when he went into service. So we're thrilled that you came to visit us today. <laughs> we're thrilled yeah. to the stories, right? I think you'll want to be shamed because I don't know enough to shut up. <laughs> well, oh, we, no. we enjoyed the stories. We so often don't get to hear about Everett when it was a different community than today. When little girls were doing cartwheels down the street with their bloomers on. Yeah, yeah, right? right yeah. We, we lose that perspective. So, thank you so much for sharing. And by the way, across the street was a theater. Broadway theater. And I danced in that theater. Ooh. See, the dancing teacher took us to there so that we would get, uh, ex not exercise, but um, experience. Experience is what you need. And you need experience. And uh, just imagine you're going to go up to the high school and talk with the others. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate you coming by. It's, it's an honor to have you in this room today. It is. It's a treat and a treasure. Your coffee is nice. Johnny, go in. I'm going to take a couple of pictures here. Is it free? Nice. Come on over, Sit there. Sit down on the chair over there. Let's see if we can sit down. Right, Do you right want there. me on a chair? Yeah. At the, at the end over there, right there. P pick up one of the that. Excuse me. Sorry, I never stopped talking. Oh, I see. These things don't move. Don't move. They move. They're just a little careful, guys. Don't fall. Just turn around. Sure. Keep turning. Keep turning. You go on the other side. Come on this side. Come on this side. Sit over there. Okay. Johnny. Johnny. Yes, my friend. You're the most important person. No, no, no. Go there. Go there. That end over there. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> don't idea. you know the rules? There is no arguing. There is no them. arguing without them. Now there's a young lady there back there. I want to see her. That's it. Excellent. Okay. What about the you, dear? You want to go there or not? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just once again, please. Everybody's happy, right? You know why you're here today, right? Yeah. Okay. Are we good?
That's the sixth and seventh, the sixth graders. Yeah. No, you're not. Go ahead, go say hi to the kids. They came out to meet you. We had a good time in the bank, didn't we? Yes, we did. But the adult, the Keep moving, keep moving. Hello, welcome. Are you
Thank you for coming. I'm suddenly thinking of my father. Yeah. Do you need a little bite here? Love, you know, I met a man in the square, and he remembered my father from the automobile place where my father used to put his tires. And he said, he found me. people 500. It should only be 500. We're 100 over, over, over capacity. Wow. Oh, you, you see the picture? Mm -hmm. 